So grill, that is so crazy. You know, one of the best ways to make money in the stock market, I think it's well known to serious investors, is to look at IPOs and spinoffs. And the rationale, I wonder if anybody could uh, explain the rationale. Rob, uh, if you're a Godel subscriber, you can just uh, type in here in the general chat and I'll try to take a look at the stock market. I've never tried RTMS, I don't think it works. The new, I was just, just looking at Neurocrine. Neurocrine's got a pretty good pipeline. I actually really bullish on Neurocrine. So Grail was Illumina's thing. Okay, there's something wrong with this. Uh, nobody's got the right market cap for, it's a little bit of a bigger company than uh, it says in all the services. They had 31 million shares outstanding on June 30th, but my guess is there was some conversion or some other thing that happened. And they have a different amount. Okay, yeah, so June 24th, we got distributed. 85, okay, hold on. We gotta, we gotta put our thinking caps on and it still feels like it's Monday, right? Neurocrine is NBIX. Patrick, Patrick is correct. Um, a lot of institutions and also investors in general, it's not that they can't touch it. Sometimes they can't touch it, but it's also that like the stocks that you know are more comfortable to analyze than the stocks that you don't know. And it takes a bunch of activation energy to basically say, I'm gonna get up and look at this new stock and get totally familiar with it really quickly. And so usually the stocks that are brand new are mispriced, whether they're IPOs or whether they're um, spinoffs. And you can kind of see the devil, I'm sorry, you can see the proof in the pudding where Google and Meta were wildly undervalued at their IPO. Um, tons of different spinoff examples I can give you were, were super undervalued. Um, and on SPACs, right, most of the SPACs were overvalued. So you get a lot of price distortion and a smart analyst is best served looking at brand new stocks sometimes. Spinoff is completed through a distribution of 85.5% of the company's outstanding stock to the holders of record of Illumina, which resulted in the distribution of 31 million. So they kept 14 and a half. I'm still so confused because I would think that shares outstanding number is right then, but it's impo it would be impossible, I would think. This is strange because it really looks like there are 31 million shares outstanding. We're looking at GRAL, let me, Put that up on the screen here. This is the company that like Illumina, I think one of the best books for investing is called Snowball. It's about Warren Buffett and his life. It's not a how-to book, but it, it is very good. It seems like too attractive to, I mean, they spend a, a little bit, but not so crazy. These guys haven't been public for even a month, I think. So we're looking at Grail who makes this like, blood test, right? And the blood test can tell if you have cancer, which is kind of amazing. All right, so they do this test and it's a really cool test actually. It's kind of um, what some people call liquid biopsy. And they can test very small, test for very small amounts of CTCs or circulating tumor cells and different mutations. So they can actually tell what mutation your very small cancer might have. And if you know you have a very small cancer, you can probably get it surgically removed before it gets to become a big cancer. So this is a really cool product and I think it's gonna be really big. It's not that big right now. You can see it's about 120, 120 in revs. Yeah, I, I, we'll look into it, Finn, exactly how, but I do think it's some kind of, uh, I mean, it came from Illumina, so it's some kind of sequencer, NGS kind of test. I think, I mean, if you just do NGS for like the EGFR mutants and VEGF mutants and stuff like that, KRAS mutants, like at the end of the day, you're going to get a pretty good sense of some of the mutations that could be occurring and give the doctors and patients a heads up, to hopefully get this thing done in stage one instead of stage four, especially for something like pancreatic or whatever. In mean, pancreatic, there's a, there's a set of mutations that are fairly canonical. I want to say TP53 and stuff like that. Yeah, I think Sava SAVA has to be like the best short I've seen in years. Like this is literally free money. Um, you heard it here first. When will the results come out? What day? How do you short it? Do you buy puts? Big question, lots of questions, right? But yeah, no, I think it's a gigantic uh, short. This, this is just crazy to me. And it could be one of those things where 
spinoffs and IPOs, like I said, are, are really misvalued. But it, and again, I feel like a bit of a an idiot here, which should be less of an uncommon feeling. But if you see this, I mean, this should stick out at you as like odd, right? It's an eleven dollar stock, thirty one million shares outstanding, so the market caps three hundred forty million. Uh, I think the market, the shares outstanding is probably a little higher. It's like probably thirty five or something like that. But they have a billion dollars of cash. You're buying a company that's worth 300 million with a billion dollars in cash. So you're getting their business for free. Their business is this Galeri test, which I mentioned is kind of a neat, neat product for sure. I think there has to be more shares outstanding. I don't know if that deferred tax liability is that concerning. They're just burning a lot. I think that might be contemplated in the stock price. It's a massive burn. I like this paid in capital, 12.2 billion. Jesus, 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 that's a lot of money. I don't know if that's real money that went into the company, it must be. They put 10, 12 billion dollars in the company and you get to buy it for 300 million? No, this is a real company, it's not. I don't really worry about the stock market as a whole. I worry about just individual stocks. Nobody can really tell what's gonna happen to the stock market as a whole, at least not for long periods of time. It's too dynamic. There are too many things happening at once to really get a solid sense for the system. You can get the sense for maybe a few months or something like that, uh, but it's really not worth it for the average person to think about it. Okay, I guess I see why, I guess I see why the, the stock looks optically so cheap. I mean, if you're burning 200 million a quarter, that will Put a dent in any balance sheet, right? It's so just a huge footprint of a company because their scope is so big, right? Like this is like basically this going to solve cancer, but like they're convinced. That doesn't mean that everybody else is convinced. Clearly the market's pretty, pretty unconvinced. Don't you guys find that fascinating? This company is a billion dollars on the balance sheet, right? So they have basically what I would argue is the solution for cancer. So yeah, let's let's take a let's zoom in a little bit here. Nine hundred fifty nine in cash, right? Last quarter, they burned one hundred eighty six, but on the cash flow statement, I think they're burning yeah just about that. Maybe a tiny tiny bit less, but just about that. So if they if they have the same burn. They will have 600 million at the end of the year. We're pretty close to the end of the year. The market cap's 340. Could they cut their spending? Spending has gone up so much, but it's a really good product in my opinion. Yeah, they, they, they did the billion, they put the billion in. Grail has to figure out how to be a publicly traded company without imploding. Typically when a stock looks really, really cheap, there's some catch to it. You just gotta find the catch. The catch here, is that they're burning so much money that there's a decent chance they just burn through all of it. I don't know, I really like it. Like this is a really unbelievable cost structure. Yeah, I got the Pepe pin somewhere. I have time to work out, I wish. It's more like effort to work out, not time. I got time, I just don't have the effort. Oh, okay, with the Shkreli cost reduction plan, they could get they could get their iron, they can get their expenses down. Yeah, I don't know. I like the way I am just right now. Of course, I wish I could do a thousand pull-ups, uh, push-ups, and lift a hundred pounds curls and all that. But at the end of the day, I ain't got time for that. I think that they have to lower their costs, right? Like <clears throat> they cannot keep going like this. Okay, so basically. Actually, it's not that bad. They just kind of have this insane cost footprint at the moment. This GNA is just enormous for what they are. I'm not a diagnostics expert, and I know there's other companies kind of doing this, but I think this is going to be a really big space. There are other publicly traded companies doing this, actually. Garden is the other one, right? Garden's uh, struggled a bit too, I think. And Garden's got a much bigger market cap than Grail. 
TradingView doesn't really have a command line. They're, they're, they're not going to do lots of different asset classes. They don't really do news. Like, TradingView is not a terminal. It's a good chart program, for sure. But, you know, they also open source their chart program. No, I like this. I mean, you, you can buy Garden for $3 billion or this thing for a fraction. Garden has, I think, more revenue. Yeah, Garden. Garden has like four times the revenue. But Grail's, Grail will catch up, I think. IPO'd in J J June, June 25th. And it's just kind of been neutral slash dead. So yeah, I think it's interesting. I don't know if it's like run out and buy it, but it's okay. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Disinterested, um, they're doing this massive study. I mean, that's why these guys are really interesting. Like. A hundred forty thousand people, and basically, like everyone who's going to be fit, everyone's fifty-five or older, including some of us might uh, might get older. We'll uh, we'll, be, we'll be taking this biopsy once a year, and it can tell like, oh, you have ten cancer cells. We're gonna do now. We're gonna do a CAT scan to find the cancer and cut it out. You know, that's much much better than losing a loved one to cancer that just grows and grows and grows. We all kind of have these tiny cancers. Um, it's just a question of if our immune system finds them. So huge study there.